Sir, why have you observed my quantum state and summoned me here? There's a guy going around on the internet, picking on retarded black homeless men. So, why should we care? Because he has deleted my posts. What? He deleted your posts? Yes. And all I did was point out how he was wrong. He has legit no evidence. No, but I do. aircraft leaving persistent trails in the sky that dissipate and ultimately coat the sky. The official explanation for geoengineering include weather modification and the blocking of solar rays by dumping aluminum, barium, and strontium in the form of sulfates and oxides. Uh, uh, okay then, um, I guess, uh, Godless Engineer, you're next. The reason why we see more contrails in the sky is because air travel has gone up significantly, especially from the World War II days when contrails were first really uh, observed and were a problem. So the fact that we have more travelers in the skies moving about fits the whole idea that we're seeing more contrails. It doesn't mean that they're spraying. None of this means that they're spraying anything. He has legit no evidence to say that they are. Okay then, I guess uh, Daryl is saying that contrails are chemtrails and that they are causing geoengineering while GE says that there is no geoengineering occurring. I think we should define the terms. Define the terms. If only there were some sort of intergovernmental panel on climate issues. Hmm. Well, I have found these people calling themselves 
the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Sounds good enough. Let's see what they have to say. <laughs> yes. Geoengineering refers to a broad set of methods and technologies that aim to deliberately alter the climate system in order to alleviate impacts of climate change. Most, but not all, methods seek to either A. Reduce the amount of absorbed solar energy in the climate system, solar radiation management, or B. Increase the net carbon sinks from the atmosphere at a scale sufficiently large to alter climate. Solar radiation management refers to the intentional modification of the Earth's shortwave radiative budget with the aim to reduce climate change according to a given metric, e.g. surface temperature, precipitation, regional impacts, etc. Artificial injection of stratospheric aerosols and cloud brightening are two examples of SRM techniques. Here's our friends at the IPCC seem to have reached the conclusion that geoengineering is quite real and stratospheric aerosol injections are indeed a defined variable within this scope. And why wouldn't they? It's a well-established science that has produced measurable and predictive results. It's an in-demand field, and universities crave qualified instructors. And they shouldn't have problems filling these positions, as this science has been practiced for over 50 fucking years. So, we can say that geoengineering is definitely a real thing, and this term is very broad in scope, and ranging from weather modification to solar radiation management. While weather modification is a very real and fascinating subject, it's much easier understood and less controversial. And although these two subjects, stratospheric aerosol injection and weather modification are linked within the scope of this topic, this specific situation barely touches on it. For the sake of brevity, we will just stick with the stratospheric aerosol injection, but here, I have put some official, state-sponsored programs in the description. So now, what is an SAI? An SAI is a precise and calculated event that uses controlled amounts of sulfides like sulfur dioxide, carbonyl sulfide, and sulfuric acid as reflectors, which then increase the Earth's albedo level. This, in turn, reduces the solar UV radiation which passes through the air and reaches the ground. This energy is then reflected back into the upper atmosphere where it gets trapped and heats the upper atmosphere while keeping the lower atmosphere cool. Now, I would like to introduce you to Professor David Keith. Professor Keith is the Professor of Applied Physics at the Harvard School of Engineering and Applied Sciences and Professor of Public Policy at the Harvard Kennedy School. He is a very real person and does indeed exist. Professor Keith is considered to be the foremost expert on geoengineering and he will explain this much better than me. Take it away, Professor Keith. This geoengineering idea in its simplest form is basically the following. You could put um, fine particles, say sulfuric acid particles, sulfates, into the upper atmosphere, the stratosphere, where they'd reflect away sunlight and cool the planet. And I know for certain that that will work. Not that there aren't side effects, but I know for certain that it will work. And the reason is it's been done. And it was done not by us, not by me, but by nature. Here's Mount Pinatubo in the early 90s that put a whole bunch of sulfur in the stratosphere uh, with a sort of atomic bomb-like cloud. And uh, the result of that was pretty dramatic. After that and some previous volcanoes we have, you see a quite dramatic cooling of the atmosphere. So this lower bar is the upper atmosphere of the stratosphere, and it heats up after these volcanoes. But
but you'll notice that in the upper bar, which is the lower atmosphere on the surface, it cools down because we've shielded the atmosphere a little bit. There's no big mystery about it. There's lots of mystery in the details, and there are some bad side effects, like it partially destroys the ozone layer, and I'll get to that in a minute, but it clearly cools down. And one other thing, it's fast. Dr. Keith's video is very informative, and you may want to watch it before we continue. He's a brilliant man, and I want to thank him for his work on this. <laughs> John, at this point, I have to say it's not looking very good for you. But let's bring in the authority on the subject. Here is an FAA document. Read that shit, space. Contrails are line-shaped clouds or condensation trails composed of ice particles that are visible behind jet aircraft engines, typically at cruise altitudes in the upper atmosphere. Contrails have been a normal effect of jet aviation since its earliest days. Depending on the temperature and the amount of moisture in the air at aircraft altitude, contrails evaporate quickly if the humidity is low, or persist and grow if the humidity is high. Jet engine exhaust provides only a small portion of the water that forms ice in persistent contrails. Persistent contrails are mainly composed of water naturally present along the aircraft flight path. This sounds like what you are saying, and so there's nothing to see here, right? <laughs> well, let's just read a little bit further. Hmm. Well, here it gets interesting. Read on, space. A common impurity in jet fuel is sulfur, 0.05% by weight, which contributes to the formation of small particles containing various sulfur species. These particles can serve as sites for water droplet growth in the exhaust, and if water droplets form, they might freeze to form ice particles that can pose a contrail. Wait, 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 wait. Did the FAA just say that sulfides in jet fuel contribute to the contrails? What did Daryl say again? Aircraft leaving persistent trails in the sky that dissipate and ultimately coat the sky. The official explanation for geoengineering include weather modification and the blocking of solar rays by dumping aluminum, barium, and strontium in the form of sulfates and oxides. Daryl seems to think that sulfides are causing chemtrails. And the FAA says the contrails have sulfur compounds which can serve as sites for water droplet growth in the exhaust. Well, let's see if we can confirm this. And here we are! <laughs> Apparently, Drs. Lance C. Kelly and Paul Rawson of the Air Vehicles Division, Maritime Platform Division, Defense Science and Technology Organization, a branch of the Australian government, have found, quote, jet fuel contains a wide range of sulfur compounds. <sighs> and, the paper goes on to say that sulfates are generally bad for the aircraft. You can no doubt understand my disbelief when I read that the FAA states, quote, Additives currently used in jet fuels are all organic compounds that may also contain a small fraction of sulfur or nitrogen. So, not only are sulfates a natural part of jet fuel that our friends in Australia are trying to remove, but for some reason, we are adding more back in. Now, 0.05% might not sound like a lot, but in this paper they write, For example, just one kilogram of sulfur well placed in the stratosphere would roughly offset the warming effect of several hundred thousand kilograms of carbon dioxide. Oh. Well, we're out of time.
episode two soon. Ha 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 ha.